Hey, what's up, everybody? Tadera White here, Senior Pastor of the Forward Christian Center. And today is Pentecost Sunday. And what a time we had in today's worship experience. And of course, it was a drive-in worship experience, but the message was sound. I believe God really spoke a word to encourage the hearts and minds of everybody that was in attendance. And I pray that this word will bless you as well. Sit back and relax and enjoy this message entitled Divine it's always an honor and a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord. It's so great to see all of you, all of your faces today. Um, we are here on this beautiful Sunday morning to praise the Lord because he has brought us thus far. Um, I would like to welcome you all who are even tu tuning in by way of uh, Facebook Live or YouTube to our Sunday service here at Fort Worth Christian Center where Pastor Tadera White is our senior pastor. And we are so thankful that you are here with us out here in this parking lot and watching us on uh, view uh, viewing us on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we are here to praise the Lord and I have a word for you on this morning. If you will... I want to take a few seconds and I want to read a scripture from the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 15th verse. And it reads, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. All I read there is that from the fruit of your lips, you need to be blessing the mighty name of Jesus because he's done all that there is to do for us. And then a word for somebody out here in particular. A word for somebody out here in particular. Do not let anyone judge you based on a snippet of your life. I'm going to say it again. Do not let anyone judge you based on a snippet or a snapshot of your life. See, because if they're going to do that, they have to look at the whole story. And when we look at Jesus, we just cannot pull out a snippet of his life. We just cannot pull out a snippet of his life and say, oh, that uh, Jesus, he healed somebody. Well, we got to remember that he was the son of God. Oh, Jesus, he just came out the sky. No, there was a virgin birth. And we have to put all of that together to him dying on the cross. And that's how we understand him as our one and only savior. Therefore, that's the grace that we have in our lives. See, so when somebody looks at you, they just can't look at you in a place of your sin and say that that's you. No, they got to look at the whole story. And if you know, like I know, the end is just as important as the beginning. God died, or Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of our sins. So as long as you have breath in your lungs, as long as you're here today, uh, you have the opportunity to get it right. And here it is. All you had to do on this morning is pull up. Pull up and you can come hear a word from the Lord and you can get your life right and you can set yourself in the way that you should go. So I urge each and every one of you on this morning to just focus your minds on him. Think about all the goodness and the grace and the mercy that God has bestowed upon us in our lives, even for us to be here this morning. Because truth of the matter is, we all deserve to be dead and in our graves. But thank God. For his grace and mercy. Thank God that he gave his only begotten son for a sinner. Not like you, but like me. So I thank him this morning. And I'll cry out to him, hallelujah, glory to your name. I came here to praise God with the fruit of my lips. Thank you, Jesus. And I see y'all have too. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another day, another opportunity to praise and worship your holy name. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you because you saw enough in me to have me make it this far in my life. Knowing I could have been dead and in my grave, dear Heavenly Father. I do not deserve it, dear Heavenly Father. But dear Heavenly Father, you saw fit for each and every one of us, dear God, for us to have another chance to get our lives right with you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you just open our minds, open our eyes and our ears that we may hear and see you in a way that we have never heard or saw you before, dear God. Reveal to us the revelations through your word, dear God. 
Dear Heavenly Father, help us to hear you clearly that we may go in the way that you would have us to go, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit even right now, dear Heavenly Father, that we are led and guided in the right direction, dear God. Be a lamp unto our feet, be a light unto our path, dear God, that we may follow you all the way home, dear God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone that's dealing with the situation here on this, mor this morning, dear God. Bless them, dear Heavenly Father. Look down on that situation. Smile on it. Shine light on it, dear Heavenly Father. Give them a word that will give them comfort, dear God. Help them through, dear Heavenly Father. Even when they don't have enough faith for themselves, dear Heavenly Father. Help them to hold on to the faith of those that are around them, dear God. Because we know that we are stronger together, dear Heavenly Father, than we are apart. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for FCC right now, dear Heavenly Father. Bless each and every member, those that were able to pull up and those that weren't, dear Heavenly Father. Bless those that are viewing by way of social media right now, dear Heavenly Father. Bless those that are on the conference call. Reach down and touch their lives, dear Heavenly Father. Speak a word to them, dear Heavenly Father, that only you can. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for Pastor White. Give him preaching power on this morning, dear Heavenly Father. Help people to be delivered. Help souls to be saved, dear Heavenly Father, because that's why we do what we do. And it's all to your name and all to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, how good it is just to be in his presence this morning. We thank God just for being here today because it could have been another way. So we're just honoring God today with our praise today because he woke us up this morning. Amen. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. And everything about you is right Covers all my wrongs Your life saved my life And everything about you is right Covers all my wrongs Your life saved my life And everything about you is right me happy you make me home you take the pain away I'm so in love with you you make me happy you make me home you take the pain away I'm so in love with you you make me happy you make me home you take the pain away i'm so in love with you and everything about you is right covers all my wrongs your life saved my life and everything about you is right covers all my covers all my your life saved my life saved my life and everything about you, everything about you is right. Covers all my wrongs. Covers all my wrongs. Your life saved my Your life. life. Saved my life. With you With is where, where I, belong. I belong. I belong to you, Lord. I belong. I belong to you, Lord. I belong. I belong to you, Lord. Yeah. 
with you. Can't make it without you. I live to worship you. Forever me. Forever me. Yeah. 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 Forever me.
and it sat upon each of them. It sat upon each of them. So let's think about this. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, and it sat upon each of them. I want to preach for just a couple of moments from this thought. I want to talk about divine unity. Divine unity. Say that in your cards with me. Divine unity. If you're on Facebook, I want you to put that in the comment section. Divine unity. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is Pentecost Sunday, and it is Pentecost in this text. What is Pentecost? Let's go to Bible study. Pentecost is simply 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pentecost. Pente. 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And more particular, it is 10 days after Jesus has aborted a cloud and has gone back to sit at the right hand of his father. It was 10 days ago that he would give us what we call the Great Commission. As he was leaving, he was sharing his most important thoughts and concerns. And I will submit to all of us that Jesus' last command ought to be our first concern. I'm going to say that again. Jesus' last command ought to be our first concern. The thing that should concern us the most is the last thing that Jesus said. And that is to go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And he says, Lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. But there's another piece of information and revelation that Jesus shared with us as he prepared to leave. As he was leaving up, there were those who were gazing and watching, and there was one that appeared unto them, likened unto an angel, and says, uh, the same way you see him going up is the same way you will see him come back down again. It was during this time that Jesus made it emphatic to his disciples for them to wait and tarry for him in Jerusalem. Why? Because he says, I don't want you to do anything else. Get this. I don't want you to do anything else. I don't need you to do anything on my behalf until you have been endowed or endued with power. Let the church say power. He didn't want them to do anything else until they had received power. And therein is a glorious revelation of the Spirit of God that anything that you do for God, you should never do it powerless. Anything that you do, you should do with the power of God. It is always dangerous trying to do things for God without God. I hope you heard that. It is dangerous when you call yourself trying to do things for God, but you are doing them without God. And so he tells them, I want you to wait for me. I want you to tarry in Jerusalem until I come and I endow you with power. Now, this was said 10 days ago. Here we are on the day of Pentecost, 10 days after that, that he is now finally deciding to drop down his power on each of them. Here's the question that really waxed my mind. Why did it take him 10 days to finally show up and to give power to his disciples? What was happening for 10 days that it would take him this long to finally endow his disciples with his power? Can I introduce you to my sanctified mind? This is sanctified mind. What I'm thinking, sanctified mind. My sanctified mind tells me that maybe, just maybe, y'all please don't shout on this, God was giving them time to get ready for what God was about to do. So sometimes the reason God makes us wait is not because God is taking his time, it's because he's waiting on us 
to position ourselves to receive what God is about to do. Maybe just maybe I'm looking at somebody outside today or maybe I'm just uh, viewing someone is viewing on Facebook that God has given you time. Here it is to position yourself for what God is about to do next in your life so that here it is when he does show up we will no longer be able to give him the excuse that god i ain't ready because sometimes god gives you an opportunity to get ready even when he's already ready so for 10 days they had an opportunity to position themselves to prime themselves to to do what they needed to do to get all of the toxic relationships out of their lives so that they could finally say god my hands are lifted up and my heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. I ain't trying to be nosy, but who is it that God has been giving you time and chance and time and chance and you still ain't ready? You still talking about God? I, you still working on me. God, I, I just ain't ready yet. God, I, I mean, I just don't know. You think you can use somebody like me and God is saying, I've been waiting on you. You call yourself waiting on God, but in reality, God has been waiting on you. It's been 10 days, and 10 days finally comes, and we're introduced to verse number one, which simply declares that when the day of, of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. You might want to write this down if you're taking note. Let me make Pentecost more personal to you. Pentecost, write this down, put this on Facebook, is God in me. Pentecost is God in me. While you're writing that down, I want you to say that to yourself. Pentecost is God in me. All right. Let me see if I can teach it a little bit better than that. Creation is God behind me. Bethlehem, when Jesus is born, is God with me. Calvary, when Jesus died on that cross, is God for me. But Pentecost, who is God in me. And ladies and gentlemen, if we don't have within us that which is above us, then we will soon give in to the things that are around us. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Say it again for your holy mind. Check it. If we don't have within us that which is above us, we will soon give in to the things that are around us. Now do you see why the day of Pentecost is so critically important and imperative to all of us? Because this is the day that we see God working inside of us i don't know how you feel about it but i need a god who is more than a god of heaven i need a god who can be god in the earth i, I don't just need a god who sits high and looks low i need a god that walks with me that talks with me that lives with me I need the, the invisible Jesus who walks alongside of me, the paracletus who is called to walk alongside. I need a God of my circumstances and a God of my situation. I need a God to come from heaven all the way down to earth and deal with coronavirus. I need a God that can step out of heaven into the earth, into my situation, into my circumstance, and deal with the pain that afflicts my body. I need a God that's personal and private, relevant to me. Which is why if you're taking note, you might want to get this down because here's what Pentecost showed us. Number one, on the day of Pentecost, there was unification. Spell it the best way you can. Unification. Watch this. When the day of Pentecost was fully calm, they were all with one accord and in one place. Notice, notice, notice. The text did not say they were all in one accord. So they, they had a joke out a few years ago. The only card that is in the Bible, what is it? And they said it was a, an accord. Because it said on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord. 
That's 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 pretty clever, isn't it? But the text didn't say that they were all in one accord. <laughs> they crack it up over here to my right. They were not all in one accord, but the text says they were all with one accord. In one place and with one accord. Let the church shout unification. Unification suggests that they all came together in anticipation of what God was getting ready to do for all of them. Notice it says they were all with one accord and not on one accord. Because the problem with uh, this modern day church is everybody is so busy trying to get on the program until nobody is focused on getting with the program. And I believe that's what makes the church a whole lot better when we make up in our mind, I'm not trying to be seen. I, I'm just trying to get with the program. I, I, my name ain't got to be on the program. They don't have to call my name first. I don't have no special seating or no particular parking space. Long, Grandmama said, long as I got a seat in the kingdom. That's all right with me. <laughs> Pentecost teaches us about the importance of unification. Spirit of agreement that says you not just going to get blessed, but we all going to get blessed. I wonder what would happen if we made up in our mind that when we come together and when we congregate, I'm not just coming to church hoping to get my shout on. I want you to get your blessing too. I, 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 don't, I don't just want to be paid and saved. I want you to be paid and saved too. I, I don't just want my house to be blessed. I want your house to be blessed. I don't just want to get a new ride when I need one. I want you to be able to get a new ride when you need one as well. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but it ain't no fun unless my homies get some. I, I want everybody to get blessed. That's, that ought to be the mindset. That ought to be the mindset, not just naturally and not just materialistically, but spiritually as well. I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't want to be the only anointed person at the church. I don't want to be the only gifted person at church. As a matter of fact, if I were you, I wouldn't want my standard of righteousness to be the standard of righteousness that my pastor has. I don't just want him to be holy and I live like hell. The devil lives a lie. I want all of us to live at another standard. Who am I preaching to today? I don't want to live in a day and age where I expect Expect a standard of righteousness and perfection and excellence from everybody else except myself. They were all together, unified, with one accord, with one purpose. And what was the purpose? When they gathered together, it was about 120 in the upper room. When they gathered together, what was their purpose? Here it is. We are praying and anticipating, waiting on God to show up. I got a quick question for you at your cousin them church. When they open back up and they invite me to come preach, I'm going to preach this. And I'm going to ask them, how many of y'all would attend a service like that? Who, who, who's singing? Ain't no singing. I mean, we, we ain't going to invite nobody to do an A and B selection. We're not doing no A and B selection. Who, 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 who going who gonna, who gonna to play the keys? Ain't no keys. Who going to play the bass? We keeping the bass at the crib. I know we're at least going to have a drummer. Ain't no drums. This service is all about us coming together, praying, Waiting on God to do what he going to do. I mean, well, can we at least do potluck? C can we bring something to eat? Should have ate at the house. We ain't eating. This service is happening, and it only consists of us coming together, praying, waiting on God to do what God is going to do. I wonder how many people will would attend that kind of service. Ain't no lights. Ain't no camera. Well, we gonna do this on faith. We going live. We ain't going live. We're not going on YouTube. No cameras. No, no sound equipment. We're just meeting together, praying, 
with one purpose in mind. Come on, Holy Spirit, we need you now. I wonder how many people would attend that. You know, it's sad that the church now has to come together and have meetings on how we are going to impress the parishioners. What, what are we going to do to make people happy? I got news for you. If God can't make you happy, I don't know what I have that can impress you. If, 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 if things like waking up in the morning don't impress you, I don't know what to give you, man. If, if things like knowing your left foot from your right foot don't do it for you, I, I can't impress you. If things like a roof over your head and food on your table and clothes on your back don't do it for you, I don't know what I can say. I don't know what I can say or what I can do to move you. If things like one day when I was lost, he died up on the cross, don't move you. I don't know what I can say. I wonder who would attend a service like that. Or do you only wait to attend when, when your baby on program? We got the saying, so I'm going. It's, it's, it's my Sunday, the minister, so I'm going. Oh, this the week for the number two usher bowl to show up, so, so I'll, I'll be at church. Number one go next week, so I'll go next week when it's my turn. And we wonder why we're missing God. We wonder why we're not receiving from God. A Pentecostal experience is an experience that allows for us to be unified. Let the church say unification. Here we go. We're going to number two. Write it down. Verse two shows me an indication. Indication. I-N-D-I-cation. All right. Here's what happened. Verse number two. It's in your Bible if you didn't tear it out. It says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Check this. When they all came together, that's when the sound came. Hear that. On the day of Pentecost, when they all came together, nobody had their own personal agendas. Everybody only had God's agenda. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a sound came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, I need to apologize. I need to apologize uh, for 10 years ago. Well, no, Lord, that was longer than 10 years ago. 20 years ago. I done forgot how old I am. Jesus. All right, when I was around 16, 17, I remember preaching this passage and i remember brother hicks it told the church up it told the church up man i i was proud of myself that day i went off somewhere and i preached and i was preaching this and it told the church up but then the holy spirit afterwards told me up because i preached it and it sounded good but it wasn't sound doctrine because here's what i say here what i say ashley you ain't gonna believe this b this is what i said to him i said man when they all came together all of a sudden, there was a, a rushing mighty wind that came into the room. And you know what happens when, room, when the wind comes. Everything that was in the place that wasn't supposed to be there, God blew it out. And everything that was not in the place that needed to be in there, God blew it right on it. And ooh, they shouted. They shouted. They shouted. Some ran. Some fell. Some foamed at the mouth. And the Holy Spirit told me up when I got to the crib and said, Ain't no wind come in the room. The text never said that wind came in the room. It's like he slapped me across my mouth and said, read, boy. What does verse number two declare? And suddenly a sound. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It wasn't wind that came in the room. There was a sound that came in the room. Watch this. The sound was the indication that let us know here come the spirit. Which is why I believe, hear my heart on this, which is why I believe that worship is the catalyst that catapults us 
into the presence of God. There, there is something about worship. Because worship is the realm of the spirit. It is where he operates. For God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There was a sound that filled the house. One songwriter said that music is a voice of God. It's an international language understood by all mankind. There's something about a sound that gets your attention. A sound lets you know that something is about to happen that you don't even see. That's why you can be in your house and you get ready to walk outside and you hear the sound of thunder. You don't see any rain, but you go back in the house and you get your umbrella, you get your raincoat because the sound lets you know that rain was about to come. You can be driving in your car and all of a sudden you slow down when you hear the sound of trains on the track. You don't see the train on the track, but you slow up as you make your way to that set of tracks because the sound was the indication that there was a train a coming. What if I told you that God is preparing you for what he's about to do because of the sound that's in the atmosphere? And I don't know what you hear. I don't know what you hear, but I feel like the prophet. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Even when he looked in the, in the sky and he saw one small cloud the size of a man's hand. And he said, I don't see no rain, but I see one small cloud the size of a man's hand. That was a sound. That entered the room, watch this, and it filled all the house, which means one or two people didn't hear it. Everybody heard it, which is why I don't understand how tens of people and dozens of people and hundreds of people can come to church and hear a word, but only a few people hear God. You ever been surprised that people that go to church more than you, but they know less? They go to church every week, hear word every week, but you know more about God than they do because maybe the sound went in one ear and right out the other. But on this day of Pentecost, when a sound entered the house, everybody heard it. Everybody knew God was up to something. What we have been waiting for patiently for 10 days. <laughs> Nobody was tripping on day three when nothing happened. Nobody was tripping on day eight when nothing happened. All they know is it's finally here. And I want to encourage somebody sitting out here looking at me right now. Be patient and wait. He may not come when you want him to, but it's his agenda anyway. How you going to rush God doing what God trying to do anyway? If God is not impatient, why are you so impatient? It wasn't about you anyway. It was about him releasing his power. It was about him releasing his spirit. And they were all in one place. But then finally, number three, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them. You write this down, number three. I see thirdly on the day of Pentecost, that was demonstration. Demonstration. We see... First of all, unification. Secondly, we see indication. Then thirdly, we see demonstration. Holy Spirit comes in the room. And he allows for cloven tongues as a fire. Here it is. To sit upon each of them. That means everybody in attendance got a breakthrough. I'm finna, I'm finna make some folks mad when I say this. Let, let me get this, let me get this sip out before I say this. Y'all ready? It's hard to get your blessing when you are not in position. Only access decides favor. I can't bless you until I meet you. 
And sometimes we miss God because we don't show up to the right places. We miss God when we don't show up to the right things. How you will show up to a church meeting but not a prayer meeting? How you will show up to a business meeting but not a Bible meeting? They were all in one place with one accord. Watch this. They were in one place with one accord, unified, before the Holy Ghost showed up, Jay. I'm tripping because they were all together, unified, had a purpose, and the Holy Ghost hadn't even shown up yet. I got a, I got a personal problem. I got a personal question. What the problem is with us? That we got it. I got it. The Holy Ghost power. But then we can't even come together and we got it. How, how, how you... How you got his spirit but can't get along with nobody? How, how you got his spirit and you speak in tongues but you can't speak to people? You see him in the mall, see him at the gas station, walk right on by him like you don't see. If the only time you can speak to people is when you got a mic in your hand, something is wrong with this right here. If the only time you can speak to people is when it's your time to sing or when it's your time to preach or when it's your time to proclaim or to exhort, something is wrong with this right here. But the Bible says when the cloven tongues as a fire, it wasn't fire, as a fire appear, it set upon each of them. Here's what that means. Everybody in the house got a blessing. Everybody. Let the church say everybody. 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 Every, 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 every. I'm counting you every, 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 every. It's two of y'all in there. Every, every, every. Right here, y'all too. Every, every. Cuz, both of y'all. Every, every. Every, every. Y'all got the kids with y'all back there? Every, every, every. You got a dog with you? Every, 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 every. I can't see how many of y'all in the lack, but every, every, every. If you on Facebook, every, every if you on if you on Facebook, type in every. Yeah. Everybody in the whole place got the same thing that they needed from God. Why is this imperative? Why is this important? Because what God is trying to show to us on this day, which is Pentecost Sunday. If we would all just place our minds on him and forget about what we're going through, forget about the problems we're facing in our lives, forgetting about what this next week coming up is going to hold, uh, forget about whether or not it's too soon to open up or it's, uh, we need to take a few more weeks, we need to take a few more months. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on corona the devil is a lie thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on a stimulus check no thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee and i don't know how you feel about it but i hear a sound that's indicating that god is on his way and sooner or later is getting ready to turn in your favor he may not come when you want him but you ought to clap your hands honk your horn and lift up your hands and declare that he's on the way come on right there in your car i just want you to lift up a sound of worship and just thank god he's here in the parking lot you don't have to wait for him to show up. He's already here. The same God that's in the church building is the same God that's in your Nissan, that's in your Volkswagen, that's in your Chevy. He's in here and he's here right now. 
What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And so the Bible says that when they showed up, everybody came together. And when everybody came together, that was the sign to let God know, now I can move. Don't make no sense in God moving. When you got people that ain't ready to move. But I hear God saying, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, if they would simply come and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. I wish I could tell you to high five your neighbor, but don't do nothing like that today. But you ought to lay your hands on your own self and say, God, I feel your presence. Because every time I get in your spirit, your spirit will connect with my spirit. And everything that I need, you will provide. I wonder if there's anybody in the parking lot ever spent a little time with Jesus and told him all about your troubles and now you got a firm testimony that he will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by I don't know how you feel about it but it does not matter how hard it may seem if we would just come together and believe God that the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous will avail much than everybody. Every, 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 every need will be supplied. You ought to hang your hand out the window and say, Come on, Holy Spirit, we need you now. Come, Holy Spirit. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Somebody need you to come by here. Somebody needs a healing. Come by here. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Come by here. Somebody needs finances to be healed. Come by here. Somebody needs joy. Ah, come by. I'm supposed to be chilling out for the next two weeks. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, ooh, my soul shouts hallelujah. Can anybody thank God that he saved you, that he's keeping you, that he's restoring you, that he's reviving you, he's lifting you up to a higher level. And no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I'm through preaching. I'm just thanking him now. It could have been the other way. And millions didn't make it. But I'm one of the ones who did. So I praise him on Pentecost Sunday. That all things are still working together for the good of them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. So one last time, if you don't mind, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, or if you're in your car, I want you to stop typing and put your hands together and just give God the best praise 
you can offer up <laughs> that you can muster up <laughs> you making it <laughs> you surviving <laughs> through a global health pandemic you surviving when you don't know when your next check is coming you surviving and you can't even go over your mama house but I made up my mind that as good as God has been to me I can't afford not to praise his name now if you feel like I feel throw your hand up throw your head back and shout glory ah, glory hallelujah come on wave your hands in there wave them like you know Jesus cares let all the insulin know I'm still here. I could have been dead. I should have been dead. But he looked beyond my thought. He looked beyond my thought. what happens when we come together on a day like today we celebrate Easter Sunday but we overlook Pentecost and Pentecost was the day that that group of 120 people went into an upper room and said we're not asking God to give us a raise or a job or a promotion we're not asking God for a new house we're not asking God for a new wardrobe we are asking God for power for power for power and I believe that today if we would call upon the name of God and ask him if no other Sunday, I believe today he'll give us power. I'm going to say something that's going to, a lot of my friends ain't going to like me. I lost friends when I started this ministry, so that ain't nothing new to me. But I'm not sure, and God forgive me if I'm wrong, it's possible for me to swing and miss and be an error. But in a lot of ways, it looks like the church has bowed its knee to what's happening in our world. I'm not ashamed to say that. It looks like we, we've bowed our knee to what's going on in this world. I'm not saying we shouldn't be wise. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. But it also says without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you can't be all faith and no wisdom. But you can't be all wisdom and no faith. I hear God saying balance. And in a lot of ways, it looks like, I could be wrong, that the church has met its match. It looks like. Because I don't recall anything happening in my lifetime. And I've only been on the earth a very small portion of time compared to the beginning. But I don't recall in my lifetime anything that has made us have to wonder whether or not it was safe for us to congregate. Never seen that in the history of my life. 
never thought that I would have to see the day where preachers would tell people not to come to church. I never thought I would see that. Usually, I've gone, and I'm telling on myself, but I've been in places like the mall or the grocery store, and I walk about, walk past people and say, hey, Pastor, how you doing? Or, hey, Rem, how you doing? And they go ahead and tell on themselves, I know I hadn't been in church in a long time. They feeling guilty because the preacher is the one that say, hey, sister, brother, I ain't seen you in church in a long time. But now it's flipped. We're the ones saying, stay back. And I get it. I understand it. Yet at the same token, something on the inside of me keeps telling me. Maybe, just maybe, if we ask God for some power. Because I believe right now the church is the answer for the world. And if they can't look to us and see any difference and any change, then what are we there for? What are we, what are we doing? So today, I want you in your cars to pray. I want you on Facebook to be praying. I want you on YouTube praying. I'm going to pray. I want my staff, everybody here praying. Our music ministry is going to be singing. But I want us all to pray and I'm asking God, Lord, just give us power. Just give us power. I, I don't, maybe you need some money. God going to make a way for that. I'm asking you today, let's pray for power. God, empower us to be the vessels to be used during this season. I still believe Mark chapter 16, verse 18, verse 17 and 18. These signs shall follow them that believe. That if they drink poison, it won't kill them. They can tread on serpents. I still believe, it's still in the Bible. I still believe it. I'm still a preacher. I'm still a man of God. I still believe it. I still believe verse 18. That they can lay hands on the sick and they recover. I still believe that. That's still in the Bible. So I'm saying to us on today. We are praying for power. So right now, wherever you are, I want to encourage you to just pray and ask God for power. For what you're going through, ask God for power. For what others are going through, ask God for power. For what Minnesota is going through, ask God for power. For every protest, for every protester, God give us power. Give us Holy Ghost. Not fighting power, but writing power. R-I-G-H-T. Writing power. Power to get it right. Power to get our lives right. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to live right. Power to give right. Power to pray right. We need your Grant it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I know you can. I know you're able. In this moment, if you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, there's a, there's a tangible anointing right here in this parking lot. Receive him now. Give your heart. Give your life to him. If you've been backslid, if this thing has caused you to become more fearful than faithful, recommit yourself. Rededicate yourself today. He's here. He's here right now. Receive it. Say, live in me, Jesus. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Let him dwell you now. Don't worry about anything else. Where would I be? I got to have your power gotta have Jesus because I just can't make it by myself. I send power your way. I send power your way. By faith, I send power your way. What power you got such as I have, give I unto thee. I am not the power, but he gives us his power. And such as I have, I give unto thee. 
The Bible says, according to the power that worketh in us. Where would I be? Say it again. Where would I be? Where would I be? Come on, you declare that in your car. You declare that on Facebook. You declare that on YouTube. Think about it. Where? Where would I be? Where would I be? Come on, say. Where would I be without you? One last time. Where would I be? Without Can y'all say that next part? Because you make. Do I have any witnesses to that? When it was upside down You make my world You make my world go round Say it one more time. You make my world go round. I see some of y'all singing in your car. <laughs> when it was upside down. When it was upside down. You make my world go round. Come on, where are all the worshipers? That know you make my world go round. When, when did he do it? it was, when did it was upside down? Grandmama said he picked me up and turned me around, placed my feet on the solid ground. You made you make my world go round. Uh, but when did he do it? When it was when upside it down. Was upside down. down. I wish somebody would step out of their car, lift their hands, and get right back in and say, You, you made my world go round. Hey, when it was upside down, I need to see some worshipers. I'm sorry. Sue me if you must. But you made my world go round. When did he make your world go round? When did it was go upside down? Hey! You make my world go round. Go round. Woo! <laughs> when it was upside down? I feel you spinning. We're through, but say that. Where would I be without you, Paul? One last time. Where would I be without you? Come on, 
Come on, sing it real sweet to the Lord. Where would I be? Y'all say it one time. Where would I be without you? I promise this last time right here. Where would I be without you? Come on, before you get back in your car, let me see you clap your hands. Let the world know he's worthy. Let the world know he's worthy. If we got anybody wandering, we ain't even that close to each other, but we still praising him. We still letting the world know we serve a worthy God. He deserves it. He's worthy. Come on, lift your voice higher. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all stop playing, man. You know it don't take much for me. I'll praise him anywhere. I'll run all around this building. I don't even feel that good, but I I don't care. I'll let the whole world know whose side I'm on. Who's on the Lord's side? Let me see you wave your hands. Hey! Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, man. God bless you. I love you. Thank God so much for you. Listen, um, two things. If you've not given your life to Jesus, now is the time to do it. If you're out there and you've not done it, you can just throw your hand up. If you've not given your life to Jesus, you're not saved. It's not about what you've done. It's about what he has done for you. He died on a cross called Calvary so that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. All you have to do is receive that. Relationship comes first, then responsibility. It's all about accepting him right now. If you've not given him your life, this is our prayer for you today. But if you've done that and you're glad to be saved and you know you're on your way to heaven, you ought to say amen to that. Now that we've extended it in an invitation for you to give your life to Jesus. Now we extend an invitation for those of you that would like to honor the Lord by way of your giving. I encourage people, don't even give anything until you've given your heart to Jesus Christ because then you don't know what purpose you're giving to. From where is your giving coming? It has to come out of a love for Jesus Christ. If for no other reason, that's the reason that you ought to give because I cash or check and you need an envelope uh, we will come by and give an envelope to you if you are giving by text you can text to give by texting forward that's the number four w-o-r-d and the amount that you would like to give to seven seven nine seven seven forward and the amount you would like to give to seven seven nine seven seven or cash app, dollar sign, the number four, W-O-R-D-C-C. -C. That's four words, C-C. If you want to give to our uh, future building project, cash app, the dollar sign, number four. And that word behind that is future home, for future home. This is what we're working on and renovating as we speak. And we got a few more things that we got to do. Um, but if you would like to sow towards that, we encourage you to do that. If you're on Facebook and feel led to sow, think you're not robbery. Think you're not robbery to give freely. Uh, this word has been given unto you. But if you feel led to sow into this ministry, I encourage you to do so. And also, listen, I'm not a selfish pastor. I'm not stingy at all. There are some of my friends who are struggling during this season. There are some other churches whose finances are not doing so well. Even if you're a part of this ministry and you feel led to support another ministry, by all means do that. If you are a cheerful giver, the Bible says against such there is no law. 
There's no law against loving people. There's no law against giving and so on to help someone else. But if you would like to do that, feel free to do that. Check them out. They're on Facebook. They're on YouTube. They're in our community. Feel free to sow and bless them as well. Did Minister Latham leave? Ask him to come. Minister Latham. We have a few more that are giving. Listen, a couple of things. Mr. Latham is going to close us out. But a couple of things. If you would like to, in just a couple of weeks on the 13th, we're going to be doing our own prayer walk in the Inslee area. Miss Marion, would you come up and throw your hand? I need y'all to come sign up with her today. Two weeks from today, well, June 13th, I need you to sign up if you want to be a part of their prayer walk, and then we'll have a conference call or something uh, leading up to it to let you know how we're going to do it, how we're going to be structured. But if you would like to be a part of the prayer walk that we are doing, come by, sign up. If you don't feel like coming out of your car, she'll walk up to you, I'm sure, and just let you sign your name and your phone information and uh, we'll be calling you to let you know how we're going to do that, but we're going to be praying in this area on June the 13th. Also, uh, we're going to be making provision uh, to do some more in insight in worship, but <coughs> we're going to be very strategic about it. Um, if we do go into our building, we, we'll do, do some services in our building, but they're going to be limited. So you... You may need to sign up for them, call in advance, <coughs> excuse me, let us know that you plan to be in attendance for that service because we're going to distance our chairs uh, for so many people. And we'll do a couple of services so everybody will get an opportunity to come that wants to come <coughs> um, so that we don't have to continue to do this and you're turning your car off and on. I'm under the pavilion today, quite honestly, because the SUN was beaming on my head last week like super crazy and so we started a little earlier to sort of beat some of that eight and so we're going to do that so uh you will have to call the church number 205-690-3922 first come first serve say hey i'll come to the first service or i'll come to the second service we may open up to a third one if people still want to come and it's it's a demand for it um, but just call and let us know you plan to be there. We're going to make sure that we have everything that we need. Uh, masks for you if you don't have one. We would prefer that if you're coming in that you would have one. We prefer that. We prefer that. Uh, we want everybody to be safe and sound. One hour services. We're in and we're out. We're starting on time. We're leaving on time. <clears throat> but if you feel led to do that, you need to get with Ashley or call her. And let her know, hey, I wouldn't mind sending one of the services uh, on Sundays. Just let me know which one will be able to come in and to be a part of that. All right. So we're getting ahead of the curve with this uh, to make sure that we're doing everything possible, uh, that everyone is safe, that everyone is sound. Uh, but if not, that everybody is healed in Jesus' name. And so uh, make sure you see Miss Marion after service. And make sure you talk to uh, Miss Ashley after service, and she'll tell you how you can call in and be a part of that. Minister Latham, if you would come and lead us out today, sir. How many of you all were blessed by the word of God today? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you were. And because we are contemplating and thinking about and even making plans to go back into the building i hate it for the ones who never had the opportunity to come out here and pull up because it showed us that we would go the extra mile for god we won't quit on god just because something is going on that there's a pestilence going on that we'll still make an extra step to come out and say you know what god even though the conditions aren't the best 
even though I may not be able to get my praise and my dance on like I normally do, I still will come out and praise and worship you. And I promise you, God saw that. God didn't miss it. And if you will, when we get ready to go back into the building to praise and worship, your praise should go up. Not down, but up. Because we should praise God because now we can actually be in the midst of one another again. And hey, as far as I know, ain't nobody out here been sick. Not with no coronavirus anyway. And that's enough to thank God about. So praise him for that. And check it, he's kept us thus far. What makes you think he won't continue to keep us? He will. I know he will. I'm living proof. So if you will, before we get ready to leave from outside of this place on today, out of each other's presence, I just want y'all to take one more second, one more second, to thank God with the fruit of your lips for what he's done for us. He's brought us through a time, and we're not all the way through it, but he's brought us far enough through a time to where now we can see the daylight at the end of the tunnel. And I thank him for it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to praise and worship your holy name on today. We thank you, dear God, that we've been zealous enough to continue to seek after you, even when so many people gave up on you, gave up on church, gave up on what they should be doing for God. But dear Heavenly Father, we have remained faithful just as you remain faithful to us. Dear Heavenly Father, look down on us, smile on us, help us in each and every way that we need it, dear God. Dear Heavenly Father, I cannot speak to every situation, dear Heavenly Father, but I pray that somebody here on this day got revelation. I pray that somebody got the healing that they needed, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that somebody got the deliverance that they needed. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that somebody got an answer to their problem, dear God. I pray that somebody, check it, turn their life around, and now will seek you, dear God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every soul as we get ready to depart from this place, dear Heavenly Father, but not from your presence. Go with us, dear Heavenly Father. Stand by us, dear God. Walk with us throughout each and every day, dear Heavenly Father. Be with us in our homes, dear Heavenly Father. For those of us who have gone back to work, dear God, be with us there, dear Heavenly Father. Keep our children, dear Heavenly Father. For our media and our extended families, even our church family, dear Heavenly Father, the whole body of Christ, why Watch over us, dear Heavenly Father. And even in all of this stuff that's going on in this world, dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all the families, all the people that are going through things, all the people that are losing lives for no apparent reason. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all of those situations. You are the God over everything. You are the God over our lives, dear Heavenly Father. We lean, depend, and trust in you to lead us and guide us in the ways that you want us to go. Dear Heavenly Father, and now as we get ready to leave this place, I pray that the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I pray you were blessed and inspired and encouraged by this word that you have just received. If you have not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel, do so right now. We want to stay in touch with you. We want you to be able to stay in constant contact with us as well. Remember, this was Pentecost Sunday. Whatever you do, make sure that the spirit of agreement rests, rules, and abides in your household. For God has something prepared for you. I love you. I thank you so much. Continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you that God will bring us all through. I know he can. I know he will. We'll see you next time.